Happy Sunday, folks. I was out on a little walk and I got the download that I should do an oracle card reading for the collective. And so I have been guided to use some specific decks as I normally am. So we're going to be using Spirit Animal. Really, really pretty deck. Um, it's good. It's a lot. It's a lot of cards in here. And so I don't get permission to use this one very often, but it's beautiful, beautiful artwork. It's by Colette Baron reed and Angels and Ancestors. And that is a Kyle Gray deck and the Lightworker Oracle. And that is beautiful, beautiful work there. And it is Elena Fairchild. And then Izzy Ivy with Beyond Lemuria. Okay, let me get set. I'll be right back. Confirm I am clear of all negative entities, negative implants, curses, hexes, and spells of all kind, hooks, staggers, and bindings of all kind. I have permission to do an oracle card reading today for the collective. And I am grateful to the universe. We will start with Beyond the Myria deck. Remove all negative energy from this deck. Calling in the angels, the archangels, the ascendant master, source creator, Mother Sophia, our Lemurian soul emissaries and extensions. What is in the highest and best good for the collective to receive and a message from you in this now moment? Okay, live incoming message. My right ear is in the high pitched tone that I normally get with Source Creator. Remember my pendulum swings circles for yes and back and forth for no. That's a no. Am I receiving a channel message from Source Creator? Source Creator, what is your message? Is this for Andalusia only? Is this for the collective? Okay. What is your message for the collective? In this now moment on your waking dream, you can choose to give attention and energy to many things that seem chaotic and inside fear. You can also choose to turn away from the chaos and the fear in this now moment and focus on the light within. The light within you is the light within me. We share the golden cord that attaches both our energies. It is up to you to accept and give attention to my energy more than what is surrounding you. This is simply a choice that you make. When you fully and completely make this choice, you will feel my energy. This guidance is loving, it's nurturing, it's compassionate, and it is kind. It is what we are called to do in this now moment. I'm always with you, always available to guide. And I give gracious forgiveness, love, and gratitude to all who turn my way. Enjoy your collective card reading with Andalusia. Is that all source? And I am grateful to close that channel. Okay, so a little bonus channeling for you. 
Okay, I had shuffled. I think I was about to ask, are these for the collective? So this would be interesting because I did the split. So the cards on top were, were for the collective, but I didn't pull them. I channeled the message from source first. So let's see what we have. Communication, co-creation. That's exactly what he just delivered in the message to you. When we are choosing to co-create our reality, those of you that are saying, why is my reality so, why is my world so chaotic? Why is my reality so chaotic? How come all these things are happening? How come I keep putting out these fires? Well, are they for you to put out? Are they for you to get your attention? Are they for you in a sense that they're making you go away from the fire? Are you meant to put out the fire? C communication co-creation means I'm going to effectively co-create my reality. And if that means I change the way I receive communication, the way I deliver communication, the way I process communication, that's what I'm going to do. Are you willing to make those changes? Do you understand that chaos and fear-driven narratives come to you through devices many times, through our applications, through what we give our energy to? So the, the invitation is to turn away from the chaos and turn to yourself, the light within and source creator. That allows you to co-create in a higher timeline and a higher consciousness. Crown chakra, the unlimited self, absolutely. In order to receive the benefit, the full benefit of the connection that you have with source on that golden cord, you want to open up your crown. You want to have it feel comfortable receiving this energy. That requires shadow work. No, I can open your chakras. I can clear your chakras. But if you haven't done the shadow work, they're going to close right back down. They're going to be full of congestion and low vibration energy because you have to do the, the shadow work to allow the force of the energy that comes through you to clear things out. And that's another not another meaning of the crown chakra, right? Your crown is in your head and we have to get out of our head to really fully accept in the guidance of the divine because it, it's not a mental journey. It's not a mental body journey. It's a spiritual body journey. It's an energy body journey. And so therefore we have to connect on the energy centers, which is our chakra system and our compassion loving centers, which is our heart chakra specifically. Furred and feathered friends. Oh, I love this card. We are more and more aware of our furred and feathered friends that are here with us, co-creating our highest and best good. This morning when I opened the door to let the sunshine come through the front door, there was a hummingbird waiting for me. It was just hovering right in front of the door. There's no flowers there and must have sensed my approach to that doorway and that fed a little bit on the flowers and came back to the doorway and I just got that you know high vibration message from the hummingbird like everything is really truly beautiful if you allow yourself to recognize it and receive it and just be in the moment of that our furred and feather friends are helping maintain high frequency high vibration and they're the simplest most concise meaning of shadow work the birds say all the time look at us we have no baggage. We don't have suitcases. We don't have homes unless we build them and they're temporary. We understand that they're temporary and they're going to be destroyed. And we're happy and we sing our songs anyway. And evolution. This is actually a card that I used in a thumbnail recently for a message for our guardians. And it's because the the process of evolution, you see the DNA here, the process of evolution is about transformation. And we do transform in ways that you're able to bring in the wisdom of this life, but you're able to connect that wisdom to the wisdom of all your lives. And that evolutionary process takes us out of this existence because this was temporary, just like the bird's nest. And it brings you into the energy body existence that you have for you available to your essence in higher dimensions. 
So this is a temporary existence and we continue to incarnate here until we have ascended on our soul frequency and our DNA frequency out of this dimension. And that is where many of us are and find ourselves today. Okay. Next, I'm gonna do the light worker or move on negative energy from the stack. I always put, because these cards all look the same, when I do some readings, I put them back in not always the right direction. So I just wanted to check these few. Yeah. Okay. Calling in the angels, the archangels, the ascendant masters, source creator, Mother Sophia. I asked for the soul message for the collective for all light workers way showers star seeds what is that soul essence message for them in this now moment you speak Okay, power of the divine masculine. The power of the divine masculine has to be redefined because part of the, the dark agenda playbook was to emasculate and disempower our divine masculine. So they're, they're very clearly defined traits for divine masculine and divine feminine. And the divine masculine traits and the divine feminine traits have been blurred. That's part of the agenda. So that there is a less focused energy driven um, pathway that the divine masculines and divine feminine are seeking because that's when they activate their true powers. While there is this scattering of, I don't know what sex I am and I don't know what sex I want to be with. And I don't know what, 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 clothes I like to wear and all of this this confusion it diminishes and disempowers the divine masculine and the divine feminine and I'm just gonna you know may not may not be fan friendly here but the truth of the matters are in our creation the Anunnaki created in the, our DNA in the DNA they put pansexual genes in, they inserted pansexual genes in, which created the ability for same-sex couples to be attracted to one another. It was not there before. So that gene mutates and that gene becomes active in certain individuals. So yes, people are born with the gene to be lesbian or to be homosexual in whatever way. That is a mutation that is being cleared and will will work its way out of our DNA as we align to Chris, crystalline and the true junk DNA, which is the things that were added in when we were created uh, as humans, was going to be removed. And we'll go back to the crystalline DNA, the high functioning, high consciousness DNA, which has very defined structure of divine masculine and divine feminine with a healed inner child so the power of the divine masculine is that you truly do understand it is your role in life to create safe spaces to build and construct the visions of your divine feminine they are the visionaries you are the creators just like Sof Mother Sophia is the visionary and source creator is the creator. She envisions the life and he creates that. They create life together, but she's the visionary and he makes it happen. You also are responsible for supporting your divine feminine. You support that beauty, that essence, that power, that nurturing. You do not belittle. You do not 
make it seem unworthy or unlovable that a mother truly loves their children in a way that does not compare to any other love. That's the way it's supposed to be. We're supposed to embody these, these traits early on, but our culture has whitewashed it all. So there are a, there's a huge push for the divine feminine to realize their power and rise into it. And a huge push for the divine masculine to realize your power and take it back. We have to take our power back. Okay. Alchemical mutation, alchemical mutation. What you see in this card depicted is that we connect with nature. We are outside grounding. We're connecting with our energy source. We are transmuting all this energy coming in from the solars, from the CMEs, from the galactics, all these activation codes. And it's allowing us to transform that heaviness, that burden. We do the shadow work and we release the light. We release the light being. So this is like a duality card, right? You're going to alchemically transform and mutate the burdens, the heaviness, the denseness of the density of this planet. And you're going to transmute it into love and light, unity, consciousness, Christ consciousness, compassion, and kindness. And this is what you get. So you're no longer weighed down when you do your shadow work. If you feel like you're walking around with, with hundreds of pounds of chains over your body that you're carrying around with you everywhere. It's time for you to get real, get out in nature, ask for clarity, start to process your triggers, and you will then release yourself to fly amongst the angels. That's what we're called to do. Dark angel. This has come up a lot. These two cards come up all the time. These are basically like the shadow work cards in this deck, right? So you're going to transmute and transform your shadows this is the pro this is what you get when you do the work and this is where we recognize the power and beauty of the light within because we also are seeing our shadows when you have shadow work it's not a curse okay shadow work is a product a byproduct of of being a soul and incarnating into different dimensions when you go through life, you understand that we we do have shadows that we have to clear out so that we can let more light in. But the shadow aspect of ourselves is as much a part of who we are as the light. And we don't appreciate the light without darkness. So embracing your shadow side and understand that it is nothing to be ashamed of. It is just another aspect of yourself that makes you who you are today. And when you transform and alchemically mutate that dark energy into light, it's just a matter of letting go of the shadows and learning the lessons. You're going to give every party involved love, forgiveness, and gratitude and let it go. And I really do love that message. Soul child. We want to connect to your soul child. You want to connect to your soul child. And I tell you unequivocally, the biggest hindrance to the divine masculine healing and understand their, their power is that their inner child requires healing because it's the wounding of the inner child. It's the wounding of the child that you have been in many, many, many lives and spe especially this one that has set you up to be emasculated to be disempowered. And so in order to in order to get your power back, you got to go back to where it was taken. And that's usually as a child. So understanding that within all of us there's an inner child that requires healing and that healing does truly set you free and allow you to reclaim and retake your power. Okay, now we're going to go to the spirit animal. Move on negative energy from this deck.
such a big deck. Artwork is really pretty too. Sorry, getting interrupted with noises from the puppies. I apologize. Calling in the Ascendant Masters, the Archangels, the Spirit Animals, Soul Guides, Soul Emissaries. It's the now moment message of the Spirit for the Collective. I don't know about you, but I, I don't have one spirit animal. I have a lot. And they tend to present themselves in meditation. And then they come in real life. So in the reality, so um, they are definitely making their presence known. Okay, if you're looking for them. Okay, parrot spirit, watch your words. Watch your words, parrot spirit. Now I can tell you from experience, most of my life I've been told it's not what you say, it's how you said it, and. I can deliver things that are very triggering, but I I really do uphold my first and foremost um, objective, which is to be truthful. Even if the truth hurts, truth can be respected, lies cannot. I do my very best to be truthful. I don't do, I don't intentionally try to cause harm when I deliver truth, but obviously sometimes it's going to feel like a slap in the face. That being said, I am very cautious. I'm very cognizant of the words that I use. I try to deliver the words that best deliver the message I am intending to deliver without inflammatory talk and whatnot. Am I perfect? Absolutely not. But none of us are. When you go through your real transformative period where you're really alchemizing that negative and dark energy, you might find that your entire ability to communicate transforms as well, because you're going to get away from the emotional talk. You're going to get away from the, the lashing out and the verbal attacks and the, the sword that you wield with the tongue, right? And you're, because you realize the core wounds are created with that action and it carries a heavy burden when you inflict that pain on someone your soul knows that you've done that and there creates karma and you have to then offset that karma so you definitely want to not be the parrot that says all the triggering words in life once you start to do your shadow work and you start to realize that you yourself have harmed others in your words even if you never picked up your hand and struck them many times it's the damage of the words of the spoken word that are far longer lasting than a wound so definitely want to be mindful of that cow spirit the miracles are endless <laughs> this card oh, she's beautiful so when your perspective is changing, your perspective is changing and your energy is changing and you're evolving, right? We've got this evolution card. And as your DNA starts to get activated and you become more crystalline from carbon, a lot about you is going to change. And that is going to create in itself sometimes a miracle. And what do I mean by that? When I went through my own clearing, my, I had my own QET session and I really started to detach and, and do the shadow work of life. I had a really, really heavy uh, animal protein addiction. I was eating keto and I ate animal proteins all the time. And I asked source creator to release me of that craving because I had tried and I didn't feel good when I didn't eat the way I had been eating. I tried to eat other ways and I felt really, really bad. So he, they released me. They gave me food aversions where I no longer wanted any pork. 
And it gave me a, it, when I tried to eat it, I smelled like the scent that I would smell would be like if I was at a pig farm. It's very unappetizing. And the same with beef. And I really got to where I would only eat poultry. And even that now is out and I'm down to fish and um, vegetable proteins, which I'm totally, totally good with. But to me, that was a miracle because I had tried for a very, very long time to release that animal protein addiction. And by, a byproduct of Ascension is that you just naturally, because of your frequency, no longer choose to do things that are not in your highest and best good. And really and truly that in itself is a miracle. So this is the the impression that, that I got from this card. There are There are miracles that we maybe don't recognize every single day, but it doesn't mean that they're not happening. And we can definitely call them miracles because it's energy, right? There's, there's not a real big evidentiary um, argument to be made, except that you asked source creator for a miracle, for a blessing, and it was given. And there's no other um, explanation for what occurs besides it being a miracle. It just is. Swan spirit, time for a deep dive. Ooh, there's a lot of shadow work clues in this in this reading. So in order to really deep dive in to alch alchemically mutating your energy and your life and your shadows, you really got to go be beneath the surface, right? So flamingos are super pretty and pink. And you know why they're pink? They're pink from how much shrimp they eat. It's, it's a byproduct of their diet and their environment. That may not be appetizing to some to know that that pretty pink bird is that way because of what they're eating and the amounts that they're eating and whatnot and the health of that of that bird and their diet. But when we go through our shadow work, when we go through truly wanting to transform our energy and co-create a better space like, uh, that we live in, a better reality, you want to go beyond the surface. So you get triggered and you understand that this is an issue. Whenever you want to go handle it efficiently, you're going to want to really go down to the source of the issue. Because if the issue occurred when you were five and it caused a core wound in that soul child, and now you're 55 and you've got 50 layers of pain on top of pain, on top of pain, on top of pain, on top of pain and heartache, and but it all comes back down to the same wound that started it all. That is where your work needs to focus. And in order to get there, you got to deep dive. So yes, there's events all along those 50 year line that you can take one by one, but you can also go down to the source. You have to go down to the source of the trauma and love all aspects of the beings that are fulfilling in many times their soul contract that you asked them to do, to be the villain in your life. Forgive every aspect, every person, place, or thing involved and give gratitude for the lesson and the growth provided to you by that trauma. That's whenever you do your deep dive. And when you truly LFG, which is love, forgiveness, and gratitude, the event that harmed your soul as a child, it heals and releases you from the heavy chains of the 50 years and it's just gone. You can't get there unless you go deep, though. Dolphin spirit. <laughs> this and that are true. There's a lot about dolphins that people don't recognize. They don't appreciate. And when they hear it, they go, huh, now that you say that, it makes a lot of sense. Dolphins are off-worlder species, along with the whales, along with a lot of mammal and uh, marine life that chose to come to this dimension this planet from Sirius B in order to have an anchored high consciousness frequency while the humans were coming through the ages so they have taken it upon themselves as a collective consciousness as their soul contract that they are here to help us even when we harm them even when we do not treat them well, even when we put them in cages and pot and break up their pods and train them to do circus tricks. 
they still give us the very best of their frequency and help humanity elevate. And they've done a fantastic job. The other thing about dolphin spirit is that their ability to heal and telepathy, telepathically communicate with us is uncanny. And at our dolphin assisted birthing centers, which are up and running in the fifth dimension, every fetus, every baby and the mom has their own dolphin. So a dolphin selects, this is not a caged scenario. The dolphins come into the sound and they know, they know, they have already telepathically chosen the soul that they're going to help arrive. And they communicate with them and they do frequent checks with us as the midwives, as the doulas, they do frequent checks on these babies and they, they communicate with them that they're taken care of, that they're healthy, that there's nothing to fear. And so the transition for mom and baby is beautiful. It is basically painless and there, everything is a water birth and everything is so much, um, elevated so much more elevated because of the frequency and the healing that is occurring and it is because of the relationship we have with the dolphins the whales are there in support but it's mainly the dolphins that assist in the birth of those beings that are seeding new earth it's not just us that are going to populate new earth we are populating new earth with lots of new babies and I absolutely love the dolphin energy if you've been around my channel for a while you understand that one of my creep incarnations was as a dolphin lord delphinus and that dolphin was best friends to poseidon that's why we're buds that's why i have a constellation named delphine <laughs> um and it's been quite the journey to reconcile all of that knowledge and all of that spirit okay now we're going to go with angels and ancestors remove all negative energy from this deck Calling in the angels, the archangels, the ascendant masters, source creator, Mother Sophia. I ask in this now moment, what is the highest and best good for the collective? In a message, who wants to step forth and guide the collective? drum dream and journey you know the saying beat to a different drum when you start your when you're truly serious on your ascension journey you're going to begin to beat to a different drum your your cadence in life changes you're, you're less about the hustle and bustle and more about the inner peace. You're less about the nightclubs and you're more about watching the stars and the moon. And you're less about going to parties and, and other social gatherings and more about just being out in nature. And that's okay. That beating to the a different drum, the sound, the beat of your drum aligns with your journey so it's going to change right so when you're super chaotic and haven't done your shadow work and you're you're trying to navigate all these energies that drum is going to be really really fast really super fast because that goes along with your energy and you don't your energy is not truly focused it's not grounded it's coming in in big spurts you don't know what to do with it it's all over the place but when you really start to process that energy and you start to do your shadow work that drum beat's going to slow down because you're allowing that energy to fall away. You're allowing it to ground. You're sharing it with Mother Gaia, with Huna Matea. And when you do that, then you get the meditation drum, right? Then you get the, the good feeling and the resonance and the frequency that is going to in, invite growth. And it's going to invite rebirth. And it's going to invite healing. And so this is where we are as a collective. Lots of people have a different beat to their drum and it feels better. And I ask you to lean into that and do more of what feels good.
Earth Mother, feel loved and comforted. Absolutely. We as a group, my ground crew here and uh, my overall crew, we worked very, very hard to help clear and cleanse and realign Huna Matea, Mother Earth. We have done all the Middle Earth, all Inner Earth, the surface layers up through the astral, all through the universe and galaxy and many other universes. We have so much um, love and gratitude from the furred and feathered friends, as well as other space races and everything. It's truly beautiful. But the one that we really, really connect with every single day, multiple times a day is Huna Matea. That is the soul of new earth. And the healing that was delivered and continues to be maintained in all her chakras and all her stargates is done and maintained by my crew. And so we connect with her on, on a multiple times a day basis to make sure that no one's messing with her anymore. And, and that has allowed her frequency to continue to rise, 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 and, and uh, ascend. She's been ahead of us. She's ascended. The planet is there. The The new earth frequency is cemented and anchored. But we continue to give her love and healing every single day because she's worth it. And I want you to embody that for yourself. Continue to give yourself love and healing and grounding with Mother Earth every single day because you're worth it. It is definitely a symbiotic relationship. We cannot ascend as a planet and people if we don't assist the planet as much as we assist the people. We have to have that symbiotic relationship. Wise one, grow within your current situation. The the owl here is, of course, a symbol of wisdom. There's also this hooked moon, uh, quarter moon there, which brings Isis into play. The wise one here, I always envision my grand white buffalo calf woman, but she is the wisest elder in our clan. And she delivers so much wisdom for us, but we have other um, aunties that are very wise. They're also elders and they've been, you know, focal points of wisdom for our family for hundreds of millions of years. And I know how that sounds, but it's the sole essence of this being that continues to pitch their, their hat, the proverbial hat into the ring and said, yep, yeah, I'll be there for them. I'll be there for the collective. I'll help guide them. Tap into that wisdom because it resides within you. When you start to let go of the material world and the, the attachments to the material world, you will then more align to your energy core, which is going to definitely call you to earth, to mother earth to connect with. And the wisdom of the culmination of all your lives and the wisdom of the, of the ascendant masters that come into you help you navigate your current situation. And that's why it's important to connect with your spirit guides and your higher self and the archangels and the ascendant masters, because they are helping you find and rediscover, remember the wisdom within so that you can navigate your current situation in a higher consciousness, higher timeline way. We make decisions every single day, multiple times a day, thousand times a day. And every decision you make is either a, a decision of a higher timeline and higher consciousness or lower timeline and lower consciousness. Are you making a decision that's service to self? Because that's going to be a lower timeline. Are you making a decision that's in service to others? Because that's a higher timeline. And I'm going to point out one thing. The more that you actually heal yourself, that is not a selfish act. To give yourself love, compassion, and healing is not a selfish act because the more you help yourself, your frequency rises and that frequency reverberates through the, the vortex that you share with those in your circle. And so you can actually help elevate people around you that are doing nothing just by you doing your work. That is a in service to others action to help yourself. That's not a selfish action. A selfish action is I'm going to do what I need to make a million dollars and I'm not going to share a dime with anyone and I'm not going to share my wisdom with them either. So they too can't go out and make their own fortune. See the difference? Moon, take note of your intuitive messages. Oh, we have a full moon coming up. We are, we are affected by 
Salah, Salah, S-A-L-A-H, is the soul of the actual genuine moon. The moon that we look at is an empty hollow core. It's a space station. It's a transfer station. But we do get energy from the genuine moon as she uses the moon that we see as a conduit and delivers that energy to us. And she wants to come in. She wants to assist you. She wants to give activations and she wants to give guidance. We have connected with Salah. She's a part of a lot of our sessions now. And she's a part of a lot of our missions. Salah and Solon. Solon is the soul of sun and they are twin flames. And they are very eager to work with us. So if you are inclined, you can call in Salah to give you guidance and messages from the moon. And definitely you want to give her some love and uh, gratitude for the illumination that she provides all the time. Okay, we're going to see what the message of the cosmos is. These are message um, cards. They're not really a card that I do a lot of interpreting on. It, it just is a message. So what is the message for the collective in this now moment? And I'll ask, is this the message for the collective? And I get that it is. And I dropped it. Life can be hard and life can be wonderful. Which will you focus on? Yeah. That takes us all the way back to the first card, communication co-creation and the message from source creator. What will you give your energy to? Where your focus goes, your energy flows. If you're, if you're wondering why bad things keep happening, it's because the bad things are taking up a lot of space in your focus and energy. And you have to alchemically mutate that and shift it over. I hope you've enjoyed this reading today and I will see you again next time. Many blessings.